<coughs> hey there guys, welcome back to a new YouTube video. <coughs> I'm going to be reading Finance Freddy's The Twisted Ones. We're going to do two parts of chapter one because of it being a big chapter. There's 30 pages in the thing <coughs> in um, chapter one, so yeah. Let me, <coughs> we're going to start with page one. I'm going to be reading it out loud, by the way. So that guys can get with the story. <clears throat> and you might want to get the book, if you want, to follow along. Don't trust your eyes, Doc, Dr. Treadwell walked back and forth across the platform at the front of the auditorium. Her steps were slow and even almost hypnotic. Your eyes deceive you every day, filling in the blanks for you in a world of sensory overload. An image of dizzying geometric detail lit up the canvas screen behind her. When I say sensory overload, I mean that quite literally at every moment, your senses are receiving far more information that then they can process all at once, and your mind is forced to choose which signals to pay attention to. It does that based on your experiences and your expectation of what is normal. The, th the things we are familiar with are the things we can, for the most part, ignore. We see this most easily with suck. <clears throat> with the olfactory fatigue your nose ceases to perceive a smell when you've been around it for a while. You, you may be quite thankful for this phenomenon depending on your habits of your roommate. The class tittered, dutfully, dutfully, whatever, I don't even care, I cannot pronounce the word. Anyways, then became quiet as, as the image of another multicolored design flashed onto the screen. The, the professor gave a hint of a smile and continued, your mind creates a motion when there is none, it fills in colors and trajectories based on what you've seen before and calculates what you should have been seeing now. <clears throat> Another image flashed onto the overhead screen. If your mind didn't do this, then simply walking outside and seeing a tree would consume all of your mental energy, leaving no resources to any to do anything else. In order for you to function in the world, your mind fills in the spaces of that tree with its own leaves and branches. A hundred pencils scribbled all at once, filling the lecture hall with a sound like scary mice. It's why when you enter a house for the first time, you experience a moment of, diz of dizziness. Your mind is taken in more than usual. It's a it's a drawing of floor plan, creating a palette of colors and saving an inventory of images to draw on later. So you don't not so you don't have to go through that exhausting intake every single time. The next time you enter the house, you'll you already know where you are. Charlie, an urgent voice, whispered her name inches from her ear. Charlie kept writing. She was staring straight ahead at the display at the front of the lecture hall. As Dr. Treadwell went on, she paced faster, occasionally flinging an arm toward the screen to illustrate her point. Her words seemed to be falling behind as her mind raced on, on ahead. Charlie had realized by the second second day of classes that her professor sometimes broke off in the middle of one sentence only to finish an entirely different one. It was she 
it, it was like she skimmed to the text in her head, reading out a few words here and there. Most of the students in her robotics class found it mad maddening, but Charlie liked it. It made the lesson kind of like doing a pus puzzle. The screen flashed again, displaying an assortment of mechanical parts and a diagram of an eye. This is what you must recreate, Dr. Treadwell stepped back from the image, turning to look at it with the class. Basic artificial intelligence is all about sensory control. You won't be dealing with a mind that can filter these out for yourself. You must design programs that re recognize basic shapes while discarding an important an important information you must do for your robot what your own mind does for you. Cre create a simplified and uh, organized assembly of information based on what's relevant. Let's start by looking at some ex sam examples of a basic shape recognition. Charlie hissed the voice again, and she waved her pencil impatiently at the figure peering over her shoulder. Her friend, are, are you trying to shoo him away? The, the gesture, the gesture for a moment put her half a step behind the professor. She hurried to catch up an anxious, not a miss missed a single line. The paper in front of her was covered in formulas, notes in, in the margins and sc sketches and diagrams. She wanted to get everything down at once. N not just the math, but all the things it made her think of if she could tie the new facts to things she already knew. She retained it much more easily. She felt hungry for it alert. Watching for the new tidbits for of information like a dog under the dinner table. A boy near the front raised his hand and asked a question, and Charlie felt a brief fear of impatience. Now the whole class would have to stop while Treadwell went back to explain a simple con concept. Charlie let her mind wander, sketching Absently in the margins of her notebook, John would be here, and she glanced restlessly at her and watched an hour. I, I told him, maybe someday we'll see each other again. I guess it's someday. He called out of the blue. I'm just going to be passing through, he said, and Charlie hadn't bothered to ask. He knew where she was. Of course he would know. Th there was no reason to meet, not to meet him. And she found herself alternately excited and filled with dread. Now as she absent, absently sketched her rectangular forms along the bottom of her notepaper, her stomach jumped a little spasm of nerves. It felt like a lifetime since she saw him. Sometimes it felt like she'd seen him yesterday, as if the last year hadn't passed. But, of course, it had, and everything had changed for Charlie once again. That May, the, the night of her 18th birthday, the dreams had begun. Charlie was long accustomed to her to nightmares, the worst moments of, of her past forced up like a bile into twisted ver twisted versions of memory already too terrible to recall she shoved these dreams in, into the back of her mind in the morning and sealed them away knowing they would only breach when it when night fell again these dreams were different when she woke she was Physically exhausted, not just drained, but sore. Her muscles, muscles, weak. Her hands were stiff and aching, like they, 
they've been clenched into fists for hours. These new dreams didn't come every night, but when they did, they interrupted her regular nightmares and took them forever. It didn't matter if she was running and screaming for her life or wandering aimlessly through a dull mishmash of various places she'd been all week. Suddenly, from nowhere, she would sense him. Sammy, her lost twin brother, was near. She knew he was present the same way she knew that she was present. And whatever the dream was, it dropped away. People, places, light, and sound. Now she was searching for him in the darkness, calling his name. He never answered. She would drop to her hands and knees, felt, feeling her way through the dark, letting his presence guide her until she came to the to a barrier. It was smooth and cold and metal. She couldn't see it, but she hit it hard with one fist, and it echoed, Sammy. She would cold, hitting it harder. She stood reaching up to see if it could scale the slick surface, but stretched up far above her head. She beat her fist again. She beats her fist against the barricade until they hurt. She screamed for her brother's name until her throat was raw. She fell to the f floor and leaned on the solid metal, pressing her her cheek to to its cool surface and hoping solid metal pressing her check to to its cool surface and hoping for a whis whisper from the other side he was there she knew it as surely as if he was part of herself she knew in those dreams that she was he was present worse when she was awake she knew she he was not there. In August, Charlie and Aunt Jen had her first fight. They'd always been too distant to really argue. Charlie never felt the need to rebel against Jen, provided no real authority, and Jen never took anything. Charlie did personally never try to stop her from doing anything. As long as she was safe, the day Charlie moved in, and her at, at the age of seven, Aunt Jen had told her plainly that she was not a replacement for Charlie's parents. By now, Charlie was old enough to understand that Jen had meant it as a gesture of respect, a way to reassure Charlie that her father wouldn't be forgotten. That she would always be his child, but at the time it seemed like an astonishment. Don't be it parenting. Don't expect love. And and so Charlie hadn't. Jen had never failed to care. Charlie. Charlie had never wanted to wanted food for food and clothing. And and Jen had taught taught her to cook to take care of the house, to manage her money, and fix her own car. You have to be independent, Charlie. You have to know how to take care of yourself. You have to be stronger than she cut herself off, but Charlie knew the sentence ended, then your father. Charlie shook her head, trying to jerk herself free of her own thoughts. What's wrong, Audie said to next to her. Nothing, she whispered. She ran her pencil again and over the same lines up, up, down, over the graphite, wearing thicker and thicker. Charlie had told Jen that she was going back to Hurricane, and Jen's face to turned stony, her skin paling. Why? Why would you want to do that? She asked f with a dangerous calm in her voice. Charlie's heart beat faster because that's where I lost him. Because I need more than you. I need you. 
The thought of returning had been nagging at her for months, growing stronger with each passing week. One morning she woke and choice and the choice was um was was made. Final sitting in her mind with a solid weight. Jessica had gone to college to to at St. George. She told her aunt she is starting the summer semester so I can stay with her while I'm there. I want to see the house again. There's still so much I don't understand. It just feels important she finished weekly, faltering as Jen's eyes um, dark and blue like marble fixed on her. Jen didn't answer for a long moment. Then she said simply, No, why not? Charlie might once said, You'll let me go before... But what after the what happened last year, when she and Jess, Jessica and and the others went back to Freddy's and discovered the hor the horrifying truth behind the murders at her father's old pizzeria, things had changed between them. Charlie had changed now. She met Jen's gaze, determined. I'm going, she said, trying to keep her own voice steady. Then everything imploded. Charlie didn't didn't know which of them stern stern started shouting first at her aunt. Every pain she inf inflicted, every every hurt she said, failed to prevent Jen. Shouted back that she only ever meant to care for Charlie. That she had had always done her best. Flinging reassuring words that somehow dripped with poison. I'm leaving, Charlie screamed with a finality. She started for the door, but Jen grabbed her arm, yanking her violently back. Charlie stumbled, almost falling before she caught herself on the kitchen table, and Jen let, let her hand drop with a shocked impression. There was silence, and Charlie left. She packed a bag, feeling as she she had somehow diverged and from reality into an impossible par parallel world. Then she got in, in the car and drove away. She didn't tell anymore. She was she was going to her friends, where not close friends. There was no. No one she shown as explanation. When Charlie got to Hurricane, she intended to go straight to her father's house to sit, to stay there for the next few days until Jessica arrived on campus. But as she reached the city limits, something stopped her. I can't, she thought. I can't ever go back. She turned the car around drove straight to St. George and slept in her car for a week. It was only after Charlie knocked and Jessica opened the door with a startled expression that Charlie realized that she never actually mentioned her plans to Jessica on Mom. They all depended. She told her everything, and Jessica he hesitantly um, offered to let her stay. Charlie had slept on the floor the rest of the summer as the fall semester approached. Jessica didn't ask her to leave. It was nice for someone to have me here. That was me here. Alright, um, I'm gonna end the video here. Bye, guys!